Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is a follow-up video to a video I did about a month ago, the 1837 Giza, the bridge, dike, and pre-sand Egypt, where I tell about the journey almost 200 years ago to Giza and the excavation of what the author calls a bridge or a southern dike on the Giza Plateau, and it really bugged me. I wanted to find this, and I just kind of forgot about it, but every time I go back to Google Earth, I wonder where this is. So... I read that whole 1837 volume, and I really wanted to pinpoint this, but it wasn't really till I watched a video yesterday from Megalithomania UK, from Antoine Gigo, and uh, she talks about the Southern Dyke, but she also mentioned the more modern name, and I realized I have heard of this wall before, and it is a pretty good mystery, and I think it's a clear indication of a much, a much earlier chapter of history on the Giza Plateau. Now here, looking overhead at the Giza Plateau, I always wondered where this was, and I assumed it was down in this area here. But I can actually see it from right here. This is a massive construction, and it really surprised me actually how big this was. And I don't think we're being told the proper history of this construction. But here we go. This is the Wall of the Crows, the ancient southern dike, as uh, relayed by the author of the 1837 expedition. This does not continue under the sand, and here more modern constructions built on top of the sands that just encroached upon this area. But this is all this construction is. It goes from here to here. It's about 200 meters long, and what's even more impressive, this is about 10 meters thick, and the proper history of this I don't think is really accurately told and the more I investigate the Giza Plateau it's clearly evident to me that there was ancient harbors constructions all around the Giza Plateau now here is that video I watched yesterday and she goes over how all around surrounding Giza there is obviously desert sand and then there is a layer of sea sediments and then below the sea sediments, there are facing blocks, which just suggests a really, really early history on the Giza Plateau. And that is clear, the sedimentation. And then the facing blocks under that sedimentation. I don't think that can be ignored, and I'll leave the link for this video below. Now, in that 1837 expedition, he clearly writes that these constructions were built probably before sand had just totally covered the Giza Plateau, that these constructions are very ancient and pre-sand. That's what the author states. And here is a pic of today. And this is obviously a different section with the tunnels going through of the southern dike. So obviously water did flow underneath this at one time. And you can tell this is obviously a different area because they have the one huge massive stone that would take a crane today to place on top here but that is obviously different than the three megalithic megalithic stones we see on top of this dike here so there was water running underneath us at one time that is obvious now present-day egyptologist mark laner has written on this construction and he says it dates from the fourth dynasty and he says well the Egyptians of the 4th dynasty, well, we really don't know what they were trying to do here. And they didn't put, it was obviously unfinished. They didn't dress these stones or put hieroglyphs on it like they did in the 4th dynasty. So it's a big mystery. This wall was, you know, not completed and we don't know what it was used for. But he, he does suggest that possibly it was for flood control. So at least he does, you know, acknowledge the water aspect. But flood control, would they build a massive 200 meter long, 10 meter thick wall just for occasional flooding? No, I think this was over a body of water that was always there. And when would a body of water stretch from, you know, ancient shore to ancient shore? It would have been about, you know, around 96, 9700, 9500 BC. The same time that the D Dendera Zodiac suggests that Egyptian 
dynastic Egyptian history evolved out of, Anubis is at the center of that spiraling zodiac, suggesting that is when Egyptian history started, about 11,750 years ago. Are these constructions from that time period? Well, I can't help but think that. Now, here is the Wall of Crows, or the Southern Dyke, right here. And let's just take kind of a 3D view of this area. But in ancient times, the lake shoreline would have come across this area here. And there seems to be ancient stream beds in this area. And even Mark Lehner in his website says that there was an ancient stream in this area. But if you just take away these modern constructions, there is a low area here, and then it kind of comes around here. So would this massive 200 meter long, 10 meter thick wall have been used for a possible flood control? Or was this over a body of water that existed thousands of years ago? Here is a look, and this the author in 1837 says this is an ancient dike and bridge. There are tunnels beneath it, obviously, for water flowing. But if you take away all these modern construction, the lake would have been out here. This is an ancient dike or bridge. I find that fascinating, and I find that to be lost history right there. Now here we are looking overhead at Giza again. And it's just clear to me, there is a much earlier chapter of human history, and I think it's human history. People say, well, who built the Sphinx? Who built the pyramids? It was us, but it was just a much different us coming from a totally different epoch of human history. And here are the three pyramids, and I just want to go back to that video here. Here is infrared, and it seems to be there are massive walls surrounding the whole Giza Plateau, and even especially here on the north side. I just wanted to point that out. And what this place looked like was so much different than it is today. And I mentioned George Gurdjieff. He claims to have found a pre-sand map of the Giza Plateau, and he said he saw what we call the Sphinx today on that, and he was so intrigued by that, he made it an immediate trip to the Giza Plateau about 100 years ago. Did he see the Sphinx in a totally different form than the lion theory that has been put forth for the last couple thousand years? Well, that needs to be brought up. But it's clear to me that we have a much earlier chapter of human history. The erosion on the Sphinx, the clear pre-dynastic history of the Giza Plateau, tombs that are clearly pre-dynastic, but the Egyptologists won't offer an explanation, the Turin's King's List, that goes back way past the First Dynasty, and that is what Egyptologists used for their chronological order, but they won't recognize anything beyond or previous to the First Dynasty. That is really, that's just foolish to me. But the erosion on the Sphinx, the Demdera Zodiac, suggesting that dynastic Egyptian history spun out of a time period roughly 11,700 years ago, give or take a couple centuries, and when you go back that far, the window just opens up to an acceptable time period. So if you go back 12,000 years, a 400-year window is totally acceptable to me. So I think it is around the epoch of 11,700 years ago, give or take a couple centuries, that this place was built, and the tremendous knowledge that was downloaded in stone into the Great Pyramid, the geodetic information, the incredible mathematics, and I'm sure you've seen some other channels doing some videos on the mathematics and the geometry of the Great Pyramid, and it is incredibly fascinating. That is one of the aspects of this. I'm going to be talking about this area, but let's go down and just take a see if we can find the Wall of Crows on Google Earth, if I can get close. And I can get kind of close, and we're going to go over to an adjacent parking lot, but this whole area seems to be cordoned off and not viewable by the public. But there's the pyramids up here, 
and there seems to be quite a security fence here. But beyond here, up in this area back here is the wall of crows. And you notice this very modern stone wall here. But these bricks, or these massive megalithic blocks here, almost appear as big as these stones, yet this wall is about 100 meters behind this more modern wall. But that is the only look at the wall of crows I can give you. It seems to be a place that isn't mentioned much, and my subscribers who have visited Egypt, is this place even mentioned? That is something I want to know. But this place suggests a much earlier chapter of history on the Giza Plateau. Now here's an overhead look at Giza, and my next pyramid videos will probably be about the remaining five pyramids on the Giza Plateau. I've already gone over four of them. But it's clear to me from the ancient text, Giza was an island a long, long time ago. And water was around this area, and it also was on the north side. And we have pictures even where severe flooding, the water was all the way around the backside. So it's clear in ancient times this was a lake and an island. And there is harbor constructions, and I have heard many people talk about it recently. And even on the north side here, it's obvious the ancient shoreline, and even the erosion marks down here, it's clearly an uh, old ancient waterline. But you can see on this back side, there would have been a harbor right here. And this is ancient, very, very ancient harbor construction in this area. That has what research. There's another dike on this side and a bridge. But this to me, if the ancient shoreline came in here, this is obviously ancient harbor working on the Giza Plateau, suggesting a much earlier epoch of human history. Egyptologists won't recognize this, even though the evidence is right below the sand. This is the southern dike, the northern harbor, and the lost civilization of the Giza Plateau, coming from roughly 11,000 plus years ago. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.